morning, I'm Sylvia Thomas, and this is 60 Minutes. Today we'll be talking about the recent news in our world, and that is the rise of Mussolini in Italy and Stalin in the Soviet Union. Mussolini was first part of the socialist newspaper, where he talked about anarchism. In doing this, can show how Mussolini was very opportunist and wanted to have fall. However, since Italy was crumbling and just going nowhere, that is when riots and strikes and people were losing their jobs started. That is when Mussolini turned to fascism. Fascism is the belief in a totalitarian dictatorship controlling nearly all aspects of the state. Though unlike communism, it allows free enterprise and private property. Mussolini believes that Italy should be under a strong government and a strong foreign policy that will bring national glory. So what he did was terrorize the Italian parliament. Other parties that are not of the fascist ideal were shut down, and Mussolini also censored press. Italy is now a fascist dictatorship. Under Mussolini's rule, conditions for workers improved greatly, and the membership of fascism rose enormously. Now, for Joseph Stalin, things didn't look too great. After Vladimir Lenin died, Stalin, Kamenev, and Zinoviev, members of the Communist Party, allied against Trotsky, who was the contender of replacing Lenin. Then he switched sides and allied with Bukharin and fought against Trotsky, Zinoviev, and Kimenev, and eventually won his power. Stalin believes in communism, where his social classes are abolished and property is controlled. Many living under Stalin's rules have said that their freedom would be taken away and that they would have to devote their lives to the rules of communism. People would be so scared to do anything because they would be condemned if they went against Stalin's rule. My dear friend sat down with a civilian who lives under Joseph Stalin's rule and interviewed them about what it is like to live under such a controlling ruler. Here's what they had to say. We're here with Vladimir Markov, a Russian civilian. Tell me, Vladimir, what do you do for a living? Um, I work as a peasant farmer. I work with my two kids and my wife on my personally owned farm. That's very interesting. So tell me, how do you feel about Stalin becoming a dictator and coming to power? Um, well, at first I was just like everyone else in my beliefs. I supported what we had to do for our country with his five-year plan. And um, even though he was going to become a dictator, I felt like in order to help our country, I had to take total control. But um, after a while, I saw many of the atrocities he committed. And um, I started to get disagree with his philosophy and what he was doing for our country. So you're not happy that he's a dictator? Not anymore. What did you mean by Stalin's atrocities? Um, well, what I meant was is that Stalin is a ruthless man and he will do anything anyone who opposes him. And um, I've seen a lot of gruesome things that he's done while he's been in power. Um, just yesterday, my neighbor was dragged out of his house in front of his uh, two kids and wife and was shot by two Russian soldiers. And later I found out he was shot just because he was in an anti-Stalin group and the government found out and that's why they killed him. That's terrible. It was very bad. <laughs> What other ruthless things have you seen or heard about under Stalin? I heard from another one of my neighbors that there is this cult that worships Stalin and there's people that go to the cult to uh, applaud for Stalin but I heard also heard that um, the person who applauds the quietest or uh, stops applauding first is usually sent to jail for not praising Stalin enough. How do you feel about Stalin now? And why don't you stand up for yourself if you disagree with Stalin? Well, if I said even one bad thing about Stalin, I think I'd be shot on the spot. Um, in fact, I'm even scared to do this interview right now, knowing that he might kill me if he sees it. As for my feelings about him, I completely disagree with what he's doing now, even though at first I did agree with his philosophies. But if anyone asks me how I feel about him, I say that I really do like the man, and if I don't, I know I will die.
blickt die Zukunft des deutschen Volkes. contributions to the war, but the Axis power really stands out, as well as the alliances. The Axis alliance was Germany, Italy, and Japan. The Axis allies had two common interests, which were territorial expansion and foundation of empires based on military rule, and to overthrow the post-World War I international order. The second thing they shared in common was to destroy the neutralized Soviet communism. Once decided, all the allies wanted to destroy the rise of European power. They were announced to be the Rome-Berlin Axis a week later after signing the treaty, the Friendship Treaty. The Allied powers have in fact been defeated. Italy was the first Axis partner to surrender under the dictator of Benito Mussolini. Following that, Romanian troops decided to go alongside the Soviet troops for the rest of the war. During the war, Germany focused on Hungary as their main territory to seize control of and to prevent leaders from leaving the Axis. They never surrendered. When the war ended, Hungary only then, Soviet troops fought the last Axis group being Hungary. Germany soon surrendered after Hitler committed suicide, leaving Japan to fight alone. Months later, Japan finally surrendered. Go. Whenever you're ready. Just start <laughs> Why is it so funny? Why do people laugh every time we try to record? Okay, whenever you're ready. I'm just going to hold it. Start and stop whenever you want to. Enough. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to look at the wall. All right. You can go. Ready? Mm hmm And um, I've seen so many, so many. <laughs> um, under Mussolini's conditions, and bleh, is what they wanted to do. <laughs> Just start from there. No, redo. Ready? Oh, yeah, I'm ready, dude. I'm Ben ready. <laughs> her eyes. George, just come and look at her eyes. Okay, go. Just start reading. They look like black dots. Newspaper where he talked about and I and yeah. Okay.